Welcome to this quick tour of the Partner CPRM platform. When you first log in to Partner, uh, you will come to this home page, which has a few, of a few helpful links uh, to get around. Um, on the bottom, you'll see some links uh, to various guides and resources on our websites, as well as two uh, scenario examples uh, that walk through some sample data to show you how the platform works. There's also a link to our support center and a link to buy your annual license uh, if you want to get started. On the left side of the screen here are all of your uh, navigation options here. Um, and at this level in the platform, uh, we're in what we call your ecosystem. So your ecosystem will contain all of your various ecosystem members, um, the questions you use to gather information from them, their email templates, uh, the actual captures with your data, uh, as well as your tools for reporting and analysis. And so um, this is one of the main ways um, that you'll navigate um, and, and get around the platform. Um, you can choose which ecosystem you want to uh, join uh, right up here. And so you can see I have a few different options. Um, uh, you'll have a, a default trial ecosystem the first time you log in. If you want to walk through uh, what I'm going through, uh, you can actually create your own account uh, just by going uh, uh, online to our website to partnertool.net uh, and you'll be able to uh, create a, an account and, and log in and actually uh, explore this Community Health Coalition uh, data set. So the first of the menu items here I have on the left is our, our members library. And so this has all of the, the members of your ecosystem you add. Um, in here, you'll see some, some uh, demo data we have with various organizations. Um, you can click the name of an organization to view all of the um, primary contact data, um, additional attributes that we have created, um, as well as uh, secondary contact data for any uh, additional uh, contacts at that organization. Any of the captures uh, that you have used to capture data uh, about, this, uh, about this relationship. And then lastly, any notes you have um, specifically about this relationship. So uh, that's a great way to keep all of the information you have. Um, and of course, you can filter uh, this information using attributes. Uh, you can even change uh, what data shows up in, in this uh, library spreadsheet. When you're creating a member, you have the option of creating them individually one by one, uh, as well as selecting each of the various uh, attribute options for that organization um, and those additional contacts. Um, you can also return your member library and you can upload a group of them uh, with a file spreadsheet. Member groups are just an easy way to assign each member to a group in order to organize them and, and more easily uh, you know, manage them over time. Uh, now as I showed you earlier, uh, these attributes are used to track and collect additional data points associated uh, with various members of your ecosystem. So these, these can be you know, demographic factors, you know, information about resources, programming, um, but it can also be uh, dates and, and time, so you can track uh, different events or meetings with, with partners. Uh, and then also you can use a GIS attribute to automatically assign uh, geographic data based on, on their address. So, uh, we have a few options here, for example, uh, the house district option. As long as you have an address uh, listed for that member, uh, when you create this, it'll automatically uh, assign the house district for that member based on where they're located. So um, that's another uh, rich source of data um, for these attributes. Um, there's a lot of different options, um, and it's really just a, a quick couple of steps of choosing the name, the group, uh, and your options. Uh, to create that one, uh, new attribute. And so as you can see, I now have a new attribute that I just made an example with those options. So it is that easy. And you can delete it just like that. In the questions library, we have a lot of different questions that we can use uh, to collect data and information from our partners. So um, one of the nice parts about the platform is that it comes with a lot of built-in uh, template questions that we provide, um, both relational questions that gather you know, network data as well as just non-relational data, uh, which is what you're probably familiar with. So there are a lot of different 
uh, questions in here that we have used and developed over time uh, that we make available uh, to you. Uh, and that includes our value and our trust uh, score questions, uh, which have been used in, in dozens of other uh, studies, uh, so that you can kind of uh, get a multi-dimensional view of your network. There's also the option, though, to actually create any of your own questions by, uh, you know, from scratch. So uh, we have, you know, single option, uh, multiple choice, open-ended, um, as well as a number of matrix question op options that you can choose from. Uh, and lastly, we have our email templates library. So this is where you can create uh, email templates. Uh, you know, you can use custom variables to add, uh, you know, tags and, and attributes of various members. Uh, and then also, you know, personalize the template name, your subject, um, subject line, and the actual text of the email. Um, we give you a few different starting templates, so you don't have to start from scratch, uh, that you can also take a look at here. And uh, these are especially helpful when it comes to sending out uh, relational surveys and, and capturing data, um, which is what we'll look at here. So within an ecosystem, these captures are essentially uh, where you're going to be capturing that relational uh, element, um, you know, drawing the lines between your various partners to create uh, network maps and ecosystem visualizations. So captures are flexible. You can use them um, over time, like, you know, collecting uh, data in a new capture once a month or, or once a quarter, or you could use them, you know, organizationally. So you could have one capture per uh, program area or uh, department in your organization so that you can track uh, you know, differences and, and variances in, in connection across your, uh, you know, your agency or your, your organization. So I'm going to open up this community health coalition simulation um, and use that here to walk through in our tour. Now, when you are uh, navigating an actual uh, capture within your ecosystem, you're going to use the navigation menu here on your right, uh, which is pretty similar to the main navigation menu. It's just specifically for only the data within, uh, within this uh, one snapshot in time. So um, the overview page will show us some basic information about um, our response rates and you know, how much data we have uh, collected and submitted from our partners. There's also an option to download the raw data from this uh, so we can do some further analysis and just make sure it's backed up, um, as well as a network map that just shows the current status of, uh, of the data we have. And so here you can really already start to see this, this coalition uh, map that is developing. The members tab here uh, will show specific information on, on response rates for each member of, of the capture that you added, um, which is, is helpful when you're trying to do follow-up outreach. You can use the options here on the right for example, to get a copy of the link to their specific survey. So you can copy and paste that into your own you know, email provider and send them a personalized follow-up email, for example. It's also possible to view their member profile here and their respondent profile um, uh, get, to get a link for that as well, which is a great way to share your data uh, with them afterwards. So we'll, we'll walk through that in a little bit. Uh, the questions tab here uh, is essentially a survey builder right here within the capture so that uh, you can use all of the questions you selected when you created the capture uh, and add some more um, functionality to them. So first, uh, we've got a, a verification system you can uh, use just to make sure that the proper people are responding to each survey. Um, and this is important because, um, you know, in order to properly draw the network map, uh, we do need to make sure we know who is answering the survey uh, and who is identifying you know who they who they are connected to um, you can hide this if you want but it is not recommended we do recommend you include that as well as this uh, just quick consent message um, there's also some instructions you can update uh, and then the bulk of your survey which you can update in here directly um, you can also uh, add things like skip logic um, that allows you to you know, skip forward or backwards depending on responses. Uh, and then at the bottom, you can edit your submission message, which is uh, you know, shown to them when they complete your survey. And you also have the option to automatically allow them to view their member profile. So um, you can do this just to everyone, or you can use some, use some logic here 
uh, and create a, a uh, you know filter. So for example, I could say, I only want organizations you know that are 100 plus to be shown in their member profile. So um, that would ensure that only the the right uh, respondents, so to speak, are, are seeing that that raw data before you kind of have a chance to go in and, and clean it up a bit. The emails tab is, is where you'll be able to schedule and send emails. Um, you can use the scheduling system to select uh, a type of template, you know, a, uh, a date and a time, and then your specific template, and that's all it takes to schedule it. Um, you can create more um, by clicking the little button there, and you'll see it's scheduled there, and you can delete it just with that click there. Um, there's also an option to send manual uh, emails instead of scheduling them, so you can just click the manual button and then select who you want to email uh, and uh, what email it is you want to send. Um, and then lastly, we have some additional email settings that you can uh, uh, use too. Now the analyzer is, is where all of this really comes together. Your network data, uh, the attributes from your member library, uh, and your GIS data, all of this ends up uh, in, a, in a really easy way to explore and slice and dice uh, your data to try to answer uh, the questions that you care about. So uh, the left side, uh, you'll see some options for coloring and sizing uh, your nodes. These are the, the main entities within your network map. Um, you can drag these around by clicking them. And you can also click one to see more information about that specific uh, ecosystem member, including some of their scores that are calculated uh, and their basic information. Um, you can also choose to size the nodes depending on uh, a metric. So centrality will show how, uh, you know, um, how many connections they have, while trust will show differences in perceptions of trust, you know, how how these members perceive one another, which is a really helpful tool. Uh, you can also do the same thing here and recolor the relationships themselves. Um, so you can really start to um, you know, layer these on top of one another um, and, and, and get an idea of you know, the uh, differences um, between different relationships. So when you find a um, you know, network back you really like, you can save or download an image. If you save it, you'll be able to actually add that in dashboards um, or member profiles uh, in, in an interactive format where people themselves will be able to click through. So um, we recommend doing that uh, as a default unless you need to you know, include this into more of a static document. Uh, the legend also allows you to filter through different types of organizations. So that's one more way to sort of explore the data um, whenever you would like. Um, you can also use our GIS mapping option, which will show a lot of the same network data in the same way, but on a GIS map uh, that has each node fixed to their geographic position. So this is great if you're trying to understand, you know, the the geographic, uh, you know, reach of your your uh, network, um, as well as to identify gaps, you know, what neighborhoods you might not be serving or um, you know partnering with, um, so you can make an action plan. Um, you know, to fill those gaps with new partnerships. The Network Scores tab will have all of the raw uh, network data for your uh, network, and both at the individual level and at the overall network level. Um, I like to use this uh, specifically when I'm trying to quickly find, uh, you know, high scores or low scores in a category. So, you know, if I wanted to see who my, uh, who my most, uh, you know, central organizations are, I can click and sort by degree centrality and see that public health here, this department has, uh, is connected to 54% of the overall network, which is very high compared to the rest. So um, that's an easy way to just find a certain member when you're looking for a certain quality. Lastly, we have this just quick tool for creating, you know, a variety of different charts uh, and tables uh, that shares your data. Um, but we also have a crosstab features, which uh, lets you compare, you know, attributes or scores um, or question responses, and try to identify essentially a heat map of their responses to figure out, you know, where are their trends or relationships between various types of data. I mentioned earlier that we have a dashboards feature, uh, so you can take, uh, you know, some of those visualizations you save 
uh, and customize them into an overall interactive dashboard online. Um, and, and it's pretty neat because, uh, as you'll see here in a second, uh, you can share this uh, you know, with a link or you can download it as a PDF so people have options. Uh, and you can also, again, kind of explore these networks for yourself. So um, these are as big or as little as you want them to be um, and are, are really quite flexible in, in terms of the number of ways you can use it. Lastly, we have our member profiles, which I, I mentioned early on. These are a customizable way to view all of the information about each member of your ecosystem. So we have added some graphics to these to make them um, you know, a little more branded and professional, um, but you can use the, the simple sort of uh, blocks system to, to add various visualizations, scores, and other elements. Uh, and uh, you can also do the same for a respondent profile, uh, which is what you can automatically share with various members after they complete their survey. And so this allows you to have an internal uh, facing uh, report, you know, uh, for your, your own organization's purposes, and then more of an external one that you can share directly with your partners. Um, in order to view those, you can jump back to your member list, um, pick somebody uh, you are interested in and click member profile. Uh, and that'll do the, the same thing that the, the dashboard functionality did um, and quickly apply your, your template here and, and pull up all of the results for you, uh, both in, a, in an online format as well as a PDF uh, format. So that is the bulk of what you can do here in the partner platform. Um, all of your data is always um, you know, ready to be exported. Um, your account settings can be accessed here if you do need to you know, edit of any of your personal user account information, um, as well as settings for customizing things like, for example, um, some of the menu option appearances can be customized. If you need help, you can always visit our support center just by hitting the help button in the bottom left. Uh, here you'll find our online community, our knowledge base with uh, multiple resources you can use uh, to get assistance, uh, as well as the ability to uh, create a ticket and request some assistance from our team. All right, that about wraps it up here for our partner platform tour. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, you can always contact our team to learn more at hello at visiblenetworklabs.com. Thanks much.